Hello friends, today I'll show you how I perform a single-handed fake off for fragment removal. This is not an attempt at daredevilry, nor is this a recommended technique. I'm merely performing this to demonstrate the amazing flow and vacuum dynamics of the fake off machine. I would definitely not encourage you to try this as a separate technique, but just to notice how things go and how you can use the flow and the vacuum simply to propel the pieces towards the FACO tip to improve the fallibility and subsequently to remove the FACO pieces. This of course can help you in certain situations where you encounter a non-rotating nuclear fragment or in cases of weak zonules where you are a little apprehensive about rotating the fragments. Now let us see the FACO emulsification in progress. So I'm performing the direct FACO chop. This is a grade 2 nuclear sclerotic cataract. And the FACO power that I'm using is around 30%. It's important that you drive the FACO tip to the sufficient depth before you attempt the chop. And it's also important to ensure that the fragments that are created are separated through and through, right to the bottom and to the middle. And the posterior plate is totally divided. So I make multiple small fragments. It's not just usually four, even if it's a grade two nuclear sclerotic cataract. I attempt to make at least six nuclear fragments. The smaller the fragments, the easier will be the mobilization of the nucleus fragments. Now, at this point, the FACO is one-handed. There's no sideboard instrument at all, and what you're about to see is totally unedited. You see that the flow as well as the vacuum can be used to attract the pieces towards the FACO tip. In addition, one needs to understand the dynamics of the active bevel. Now remember that in whichever direction a bevel is turned, the vacuum will be operative in that line. So you don't really have to push the piece downwards towards 6 o'clock in order to impale it. So all you have to do is to turn the bevel in the direction of the piece. And then when you activate the aspiration flow rate and the vacuum, you find the vacuum attracts the piece and then once you bring it to the safe zone, you rotate the bevel upwards and make it safe and emulsify. It's also important to make sure that you do not move or wave around the FACO handpiece too much within the anterior chamber. It should be kept steady. The only thing that you could probably do is to swivel the FACO handpiece slightly to change the direction of the bevel so that the bevel is always facing in the direction of the piece that has to be attracted and brought towards the FACO tip. Now for a sub fragment, what I'm doing is turning the bevel face down. This will cause immediate occlusion of the nucleus fragment and then you can bring it to the center. As you bring it to the center, the bevel is slowly turned upwards so that it's made safe and doesn't damage the posterior capsule. In this way, the entire fragment is completely removed, even without the use of a second instrument, the single-handed removal. Now the cortical aspiration is also done just by stabilizing the eye through the corneal pocket incision and there's no side port used. This is possible only if you have a coaxial IA system and if you have a bimanual system, you have to do it with both hands. Now the message here is the FACO fluidics and dynamics gives you a lot of advantages and is extremely superior. Most of us use the FACO fluidics and the FACO vacuum in a very minimalistic fashion without taking advantage of the full capabilities and capacities of the irrigation flow rate. Learning to use the flow rate and the vacuum optimally during your FACO technique is going to help you in certain troublesome situations and also will help you to get the maximum out of your handpiece and your FACO machine. I thank you for your attention.